Inside your background properties window, below the width and height section, you'll find a checkbox that says use as tile set. If you check this box, you'll notice that your background properties window now becomes a tile window. An extra box is added to the right side of the panel. If you've worked with strips in the sprites resource menu, you'll notice this looks similar. In the section marked tile properties, you'll find three sections. The first one has text fields for tile width and tile height. This is where you can select the width and height in pixels of each tile on your tile sheet. Below that, you'll find a section for horizontal offset and vertical offset. These two options determine in pixels how far away your first tile starts from the edge of your tile sheet. The third section contains horizontal separation and vertical separation. This is how far apart in pixels each tile is from each other. Once you're satisfied with each of these options, you can click on OK. In order to reduce the file size of a game, game makers typically use tiles. You've already knowingly or unknowingly seen them in previous retro games. Tiles act as building blocks that you can reference and repeat when painting a background. Similar to how you would have a sprite for an enemy repeat multiple times, you could have a tile for a background repeat multiple times. Let's say your game requires the use of grass. And let's say that your level is thousands of pixels wide. We could draw the entire background and import it thousands of pixels wide and thousands of pixels high, but this would needlessly use up a lot of resources. Instead, we can break down your grass sprite into a much smaller sprite. For the purposes of this example, let's say that your grass tile is 16 by 16. Once we've built our 16 by 16 grass tile, when we go to create our room or level, we can just repeat that tile over and over again infinitely. To the player, it looks like the grass goes on forever. But to the computer, it only knows about this 16 by 16 grass tile. This saves a lot of resources and keeps your game's file size down to a minimum. After you've created a tile set for your game inside the Background Assets folder, you can then open up a room and start using your tiles. Of the six tabs at the top of the Rooms window, select Tiles. From here you can just ignore the big box for now and move down and select the tile set from the drop-down menu. Once you do, the box above will showcase your tile set. Now you can simply select which tile you want to start painting onto your background. You can select one tile at a time, or if you hold the shift key, you can highlight multiple tiles. Then you can simply start clicking around your map to place the tiles. Clicking and holding down the left mouse button will drag the tile around, snapping it to your grid. If you hold down the shift key, you can then paint the tile, still snapping it to the grid. If you hold down the alt key, you can place your tile without snapping it to your grid. It is possible to place one tile on top of another, and you might not want to do this. That's why there's a checkbox for Delete Underlying. If that checkbox is ticked, anytime you place a tile on top of another one, the new tile will appear and the old tile will be deleted. If you right-click on a tile you've already placed, you'll get a drop-down menu. From here you can delete that tile. You can also delete all tiles under the cursor. This is when you have multiple tiles at different depths. You can open up the Tile Properties window. From here you can flip, or scale, or rotate, or change the overlay, or even the transparency of your tile. You can also change the position by typing in a new value for X and a new value for Y. This might put your tile in the exact spot you need it, and it might be easier for you rather than just dragging around with the mouse. You can also lock a tile in place, meaning it cannot be manipulated. And you can also rename the tile. If you hold Control while you right-click, you can paint-delete the tiles you've placed. This is faster than right-clicking and selecting Delete on each tile. Let's go ahead and just paint one basic ground for this map. Now that we've filled in the entire map, each tile rests at layer 1 million. This is denoted at the Current Tile Layer section of the Tiles tab. Now below that we have three buttons, Add, Delete, and Change. 
If we tried to place a new tile right now, and we had delete underlying selected, we would just remove the tile underneath the spot we were clicking. We might not want that now that we have our basic ground layer. What we can do is say add. This will allow us to add a new depth. Keep in mind that a lower value is closer to the screen, or higher up. So if our ground is at depth 1 million, and we wanted to place, I don't know, let's say some trees or rocks, we could just go to depth 900,000. Now if you click the drop down, you'll see we have layer 1 million and layer 900,000. Layer 900,000 is where we're going to place all our foliage. Let's select some now. The great thing about what we're doing is we're not deleting our ground layer, we're simply placing more tiles on a new layer. If you don't like the layer you're working with, you can click the delete button. A confirmation window will pop up because this will delete all the work you did on this layer. The last button, change, will allow you to change the depth number for this layer. So if you didn't want your ground layer to be at 1 million, you could put it at 50,000. Just type in that new value and click on OK. Tiles are a fast and easy way to create levels for your games. It also uses very limited resources, which is great. I would encourage you to play around with tiles for a while, creating new layer depths and painting different styles, different rooms, platform games or top-down games, just to get a sense of how creating tiles and how adding them to rooms really works. It's not something you're going to be able to master overnight. Level design is an entire job, so practice makes perfect.